Hello, welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I have this image right here. Really cool butterfly, but an ugly background. And I'm going to show you how I will handcraft this image and take it from here and turn it into this. You're going to want to watch this one. I'm going to show you a lot of really cool uh, techniques when working with your uh, flower macro type images uh, and I do specialize in this type of photography so you're going to learn a lot of things so stay tuned and let's get started. We're starting out here in Lightroom. Uh, I have no adjustments made so far. Uh, this was shot at ISO 500, 100 millimeter. Uh, it was a 70 to 200 millimeter uh, zoom lens. It was my Canon 5D Mark II. F16 on the aperture because I wanted to get as much depth of field as I could to get this butterfly as sharp as I could get them. And let's see, 1 3 20th of a second. This was handheld. It was a bright sunny day. Let's go down here to um, lens corrections. Remove chromatic aberrations is checked on. I always do this. Enable profile correction is checked on. Detail, no sharpening. This is my workflow. No noise reduction, except I leave the color noise reduction on. And uh, let's go back up to the basic here. And let's click auto and see what kind of result uh, we get here. Yeah, so that's not too bad. What I think I'll do is just open up the shadows a little bit more to make this butterfly's wing in here pop a little bit more here. Open up those shadows just a little bit. See that? See that little bit of extra that comes out there? That looks pretty good. Everything else is pretty nice. I might just pull the highlights back. Just a couple little notches here, right there. And maybe give it a tiny bit extra exposure right here. Yeah, maybe something like that. Now, this image is all about the butterfly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it because I have Gigapixel AI. And when I crop in tight tone image, I don't worry because when I'm ready to print, I run everything through Gigapixel AI and set it up for the right size. And it does a great job of adding pixels if I really cropped in super tight. Okay, so good stuff. I have videos on that. If you uh, look through my videos on my uh, YouTube channel, you'll see a lot of Gigapixel AI videos on there. All right, so let's get the crop tool up here. And I like to turn my lights out when I'm using my crop tool. And I'm using the original aspect ratio. So let's just come in. And again, this is all about the butterfly. Now, I think I want my butterfly more on the left-hand side here. And I like how you get the rule of thirds. My Lightroom is set up to give me the rule of thirds there. I might want a little bit more space above my butterfly's wings, like right here. I'm just trying to balance it out. Okay, maybe decisions, decisions. I'm thinking maybe right there. And I like to turn the lights out because it lets me just really see what my crop is going to look like. And I like that. So I'm just going to type my return key that accepts the crop. Let me turn my lights back on. I'm going to right click and we'll send this into Photoshop. And I got some really cool things to show you there. So stay tuned. Let's go ahead and zoom way into this and look at noise and sharpness. Yeah, you can see the noise in there. ISO 500, it's not too bad, but there's definitely some noise in there. So what I'm going to do is run it into Denoise AI first, and then I'm going to run it into Sharpen AI. So I'm going to come up, well, first I'm going to duplicate my background layer. So I work non-destructively here, and I'm going to come and launch Denoise AI. If I can find it, there it is. And this is my new workflow in Denoise AI. What I like to do is I start out by auto update preview. I check this off because every time you move a slider, it's going to try to re-up. It's not going to try. It will re-update itself. So I'm going to take my sharpen and shut it the whole way off because I'm using sharpen AI. So I'm thinking I don't want to double sharpen it. I used to do it that way with no problems or no issues. But now I just leave that off because I figure why well, add extra sharpening here. Okay. So. I'm going to turn my noise the whole way off here, and um, uh, let's come into 200% so we can really see the noise. Now, I have this, this line right up here, and if I move it to the left, you'll see this is the uh, original area. This is the uh, denoised area here. Right now, nothing has happened yet, and you can also move this around here, okay? So let's go ahead, and I'm going to turn the auto update on. Nothing will happen because I haven't done anything yet. Now, I'm just going to start to move my noise reduction up. 
and it'll go ahead and update itself. And look on the left here and look on the right. And what I like to do is just back it back till I see just a tiny little bit of noise there and then just maybe move it to the right a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. And sometimes I'll even move around. So you see the noise up in here? Yeah, there it is. And let's take this wiper. Whoops. This guy. Move him across. See that noise? And that noise is gone. Pretty amazing stuff. I might just bump that noise up. Remove noise just a little bit more. And I think I'm good with that. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And it's just that easy to do. I've never found a product that removes noise like Denoise AI. It is totally amazing. It really gets rid of all the noise. All right, we're back in Photoshop. Now I'm going to send it into Sharpen AI. I'm not going to duplicate the layer because there's no need to. I'm just going to come up to Filter. And now, whoops, now we're going to go to Sharpen AI. And we'll see what we get in here. Now the image on the left, again, is the unsharpened image. The image on the right is the sharpened image. Now, I'm going to do that same uh, deal where I shut off the auto update. I'm going to shut the auto update off. I'm going to pull the suppressed noise the whole way off because, you know, I really don't need it because I've already denoised this guy. So we're going to start out in the sharpened model. I think this image is pretty sharp to begin with here. Let's go ahead and just click update and take a look. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and try stabilize. I always like to go through all these. I had a question the other day on one of my videos and somebody said, well, how do you know... Um, how do you know if it's a focus problem or a stabilized problem? Like, say, if you have a really soft image. And like I explained, you really don't, but you can just try focus and stabilize, and the one that works the best is the one that you want to use. So there's stabilize it at 50, and here is sharpen at 50. They both look pretty good, so I'm just going to use sharpen, because this image is relatively sharp. I'm going to go ahead and bump the sharpness up even more and click the Update button. Yeah, it's good. One thing about uh, uh, sharpening high, you're not going to ever get halos. It is amazing stuff. This image was relatively sharp. It's one of the few that I get sharp. Okay. I had the same butterfly on a video I just did where it was, I had a shot where it was really soft, but sharpen AI totally in the focus mode brought that thing into great focus. So that's looking good. So I'm just going to go ahead and click apply and we'll be right back into Photoshop. Here we are back in Photoshop with a denoised and sharpened image. Now, the background is uh, not quite as uh, soft as I would like it to be. Now, if you recall, I did shoot this at F16 to get all that extra depth of field on the butterfly in the foreground flower here, but the background is kind of ugly to me, so I want to blur that. So I'm going to duplicate the background layer, send this into my new favorite piece of software, and that is Mask AI. And there's a really wonderful feature in here called uh, blurring the background or background blur. So what I'm going to do is, and you can come here, see here where it says auto detect subjects, give that a click. Sometimes it does a really good job, doesn't do a good job here. So I'll just undo that by just tapping this undo right here. I'm just going to draw my compute brush around here. Now, I've said this in the past, if you watch my videos, Mask AI uses a tri-map system, blue being compute. This is the area where uh, Mask AI will have to do its strongest uh, com computing, I should say, around the edges of things. And so I'm just going to paint it around here. The green area is the area it's going to keep. This area I don't want to keep, but I'll have to turn it red with a, a cut bucket and I'll show you that here in a second so I'm just going to go ahead and paint around my little flower here I don't want this so I'm going to leave that off just paint in my flowers edges here and in this area I'm just going to let that all turn blue this whole area in here I'm going to let it all turn blue so it can make calculations in here Come down my antennae. Oh, I guess that's what you call these guys, antennas. Right up to here. Now, the only thing I need to do is see these buckets here, blue, green, and red. Get a red bucket here and give it a tap and says, 
This is the cut area. This is the keep area in green. And the blue is the compute. You have two mask modes, AI or contrast. I'm going to use AI. It's artificial intelligence. It's a, uh, it's a better algorithm. I'm going to go ahead and click compute. And here we go. It'll be up here in just a few seconds. And there we go. There's our little butterfly all cut out. Now there's a few little issues we have to fix on them. No big deal. First, we're going to come up here to background and click blur. All right. And this is my tri map on the left. And let me uncheck this show tri map so we can actually see the background flower here. Now we can zoom in and see what we have to fix here. Little areas. And this is real easy to do. All we need to do is come here to mask. Click on mask right here. And... Um, Let's get a uh, keep brush, and let's see here, on my little antenna here, I'm going to zoom way in so I can really get into that antenna right there, and I'm just going to give it a little paint right here, and like magic it'll say, okay man, we're fixed. Might be a little area here it missed, so I'm going to get my cut brush, now there's shortcuts. Q for uh, compute, W for keep, and E for cut. So I just tap E and give it a little tap right there. I went ahead and sped the video up here. I'm just going around my mask and checking things very carefully just to see if I missed anything. I'm using a cut and a keep brush just to tap little spots and it fixes them right up. And, um, you know, I've had, you know, a lot of people think like, Mask AI, man, it should be one click and it should be perfect. Perfect. A lot of times it is perfect in one click, but let's face it, this is a very complicated cutout. It's a, it's a flower and it, you know, it doesn't have a human mind that it can think. It has artificial intelligence, but hey, the artificial intelligence is not the same as the human mind. I would think that we are a little bit smarter than artificial intelligence, but artificial intelligence is cool. Okay, but... Just take your time, go around and examine your image because we are crafting images and we want our images to look great. So we're going to fix them up. Now right here I used the wrong brush here. I used the cut brush instead of a keep brush. And I said, oh, I went back and got the keep brush and just painted down there. And look how it just fixes it right up. But little areas, just go right all around your mask and look for little, little areas that you missed and you can fix them. And if something got messed up, you can fix it in Photoshop once you're out of uh, Mask AI. I think we're good and now let's zoom back out and let's go back to background and let's decide how much of the background we want to go out of focus but that's how easy it works and it's beautiful I love this spend a little time get a fantastic image all right so here we go and that's all part of the joy of editing let's take the strength the whole way off so that's what it looks like now let's just slowly build it up up and get to a point where we think it looks good. I'm just looking for that nice bokeh. You know, I don't want it to look unnatural like that. You know, that would look not good. But let's just get it a little bit more out of focus. Just so I want my butterfly to be the star of the show. And I'm thinking there's a 20. Hmm. I think that maybe stands for, it's either percentage or pixels. I don't know. Let's see, 20, let me just back it off. I don't want to go too much. I think that looks good and that looks natural. It looks like a nice soft focus image. It doesn't look like it was shot at F16. It looks like it was shot at maybe, you know, maybe F56 or something like that. I like my focus. Now I'm working on the uh, background adjust. You notice I'm in the background mode under adjust and I'm just, uh, pulling my saturation back a little bit because I darkened up the exposure and I just wanted it to look just right. Now all we need to do is click apply. We have two options, composite or transparent. I'm choosing composite because I want the blended background. If I chose transparent, it would send it back with the layer mask. And here we are in Photoshop before and after. I think that is a much needed improvement. Now we're going to do a little bit of cleanup. There's a piece cut out of my butterfly here. I'm going to heal him up a little bit because I have that power in Photoshop to do that. And there's some little blemishes on this flower I want to take care of. So I'm just going to get a blank pixel layer, uh, get up my healing brush, and make sure I have sample all layers checked. And I'm going to go ahead and fix all these little spots here. I'll start out with this guy here. 
I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video here so you don't have to just uh, sit here and watch this all in uh, real time. So I'm just examining my image and uh, touching it with the healing brush. And that healing brush is amazing. you got to give it a try. I mean, clean up those images. It's an important uh, factor to any type of photography that you're doing, any edits you're doing. Do it on all of them. And here are the cleanup results, okay? Let me go ahead and zoom in. Now we're mainly looking at the butterfly and the flower here. So let's zoom in tight here. Let me shut off this healing uh, layer right here. So here it is without the healing and here it is with the healing. Very, very important. And people wonder, gosh, how do you always take such perfect pictures of flowers? Well, we have a little secret. We're almost done. I just got to get this background looking just perfect for me. Okay, so I'm going to add another blank pixel layer. And if you recall at the beginning of the video, there were, I said there were some things on this background I didn't like, like this light area here, this maybe this uh, red piece right here, and there's like a white spot right here, and I'm not sure about this brown area back here. I might do something with that. I'm going to show you how I get started here. I'm going to do it all with a paintbrush, because remember, I have a nice blurry background with no, uh, no noise in it whatsoever, so I'm going to get a uh, brush tool get myself a bigger brush. Everything's soft, you know, uh, hardness is at 0%. And uh, all I need to do is make sure my flow is set to 5%. To get there real easy, use your shortcut Shift-0-5. And then sample a color, like close to the color that you want to correct. So I'm going to sample this color right here. So if you hold your Option or Alt key down and give it a click, and now with that soft flow, you can just keep painting like this. Isn't that cool and magical? With that nice soft brush, and I can just paint that in like so. And just grab colors close to it and sample and blend. And nobody will ever know you've done this because you have a nice soft blurry background. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this up and I'll get right back to you. But that's the way I'm doing it. All right, my hand-painted background is done, and I'm really happy. Uh, as you recall, I left you off. I had this one layer right here, layer three, and I started my painting on, and then I paused the video, and here's what it ended up at right here. But then, remember I told you I wasn't sure about this brown area. So I said, you know what? I'm going to add another uh, blank pixel layer, and just in case I screwed up, that way I wouldn't hurt the the result I already had here because uh, I was happy with it. So I added another blank pixel layer and started painting over here. Now I had to paint over the butterfly here and so I got paint on the butterfly so uh, I added a layer mask and just removed the paint over paint off the butterfly. And on this layer too I had to paint in certain areas on the flower and there was some bleed over onto the flower so I just added a layer mask there and fixed it. So let me shut off my background repair layer. And we came from here and went to here, so I'm really happy with it. Now, here's the, really what's cool. Let's go to the original layer that I brought in here from Lightroom. Let me option click this background layer here and see where we started from. So we started with this image right here. Hey, it's a cool image of a, of a butterfly on a flower, but it's kind of like, this is what Mother Nature gave me, you know, some messed up leaves and some ugly background. So I said... Hey, I'm going to take matters into my own hand. And this is all about handcrafting your images through editing. And this is all part of the joy of editing. So we went from this and ended up with this. A completed image. I'm really happy with the way this uh, turned out. So I hope you agree with me. Hey, give this technique a try. I mean, this is all about handcrafting your images using editing software like Photoshop and Topaz. And this is one of the reasons I really like to use uh, Photoshop and launch my plugins from Photoshop because Photoshop lets me do all these little fix-ups and repairs and that is really, really important. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, thanks so much for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.